Good evening. Welcome to the Yeshiva dinner for Yeshiva of Carteret. My name is Haskell Bennett, and I have the great schus and honor to be, I would say they call it the master of ceremonies or the, co or the host. I am um, so privileged to be here. Uh, Any time I've had an opportunity to get closer to the extended Trank Mishpacha, um, I've always seized that opportunity, and tonight it is a real schus, a real privilege to be here together with you for an incredible opportunity to celebrate the life and legacy of my Rebbe, the one and only Rav David Shrink, Sechetzadik the Kaddish Lavracha. Tonight we're doing something unique. Usually you get invited to a yeshiva dinner. If you're close with the honorees or you have a shaykhis with the yeshiva, you show up, you get a good smorgasbord, ambiance, chavershaft, shalom aleichems, brachas from, from Anashim Chashuvim. Sometimes if you're lucky, you do Yisrael, graced the, the, uh, the moment. And tonight, the yeshiva, because of the circumstances, obviously, obviously has to deal with the corona virus that Baruch Hashem, Klal Yisrael, is forging its way through Lida with so many karbanas. So we have to be resourceful. And so normally a dinner that would attract hundreds and sometimes more of people, Yedidim, Chaveirim, Alumni, parents, students, parents of the students, grandparents of the students, alumni, as I said, and other friends and mishpacha of the yeshiva here tonight, Rabbi Sa, you stuck with me. And Baruch Hashem, I consider it a big schus. I have to drive. I used to, when I went to Adelphi yeshivas, I spent many, many years, five years to be exact, here in central, southern central Jersey, but Baruch Hashem, I don't get out to Lakewood that often, and so anytime I have a chance to come out to Lakewood to visit what used to be a small town and now a big town, so it's a big schuss for us. But I do have to say that over the last number of years, at the few times that I did come out to Lakewood, I always would be accompanied by one special spot. Without fail, if I would come to Lakewood for whatever reason, a bar mitzvah, or a simcha, a chasana, whatever it might be. Central Avenue was one of my spots. And Baruch Hashem, I still go. We still visit the Rebetzin. But driving here tonight, one year later since the Petira of my holy Rebbe, Rav David Trenk, Zechat Tzadik V'Kala Shavracha, it's a very emotional time, Rabbi Sai. It's a very emotional time for me and for my Mishpacha. Rebbe was everything to us. So here tonight, we have an opportunity. The yard site is this coming up tomorrow night, Thursday night. Friday is the yard site. And just to share with you the last two hours that I've had on my way here tonight to Lakewood in the studio to uh, help to coordinate this beautiful opportunity of bringing the yeshiva to the next level. My first stop tonight was actually to the caver of my holy Rebbe. And I dive into the Rebbe. It's, a, it's an experience every time I go, a few times that I've gone. Tonight it's a dinner that is honoring the legacy of Rabbi David Schrenk. So what is the legacy of Rabbi David Schrenk? How could I encapsulize who Rabbi David was, what he meant to the United States, what he meant to Talmidim, for over a half a century, the landscape of Chinuch really a groundbreaking, legendary, visionary Machanach, a Machanach for the ages, as they say. So we're holding in my hand, I have the great Schuss, one of the few people in America who have it, because it's coming out actually to the stores tomorrow, is the copy of this fantastic, beautiful offering by uh, Artsko Masora, which is marking the life and legacy, as they say, the life and legacy of Rabbi David Trink. And the title which I was involved with in choosing the title, how did we get to this 
Gedai Zlatowitz, and you saw Besser, and a few of the Chaverim, and you did them close. How did we get to the title of Just Love Them? So in the Hakdama to the book that the author writes, I just want to share with you the Nakuda that I think is really the, the, the Shirish of what we're all talking about over here. It brings down a very, very interesting story, which I did not know, but it makes perfect sense. And it leads us to tonight's beautiful opportunity to share in Tyra and Avaida and Gamilas Chasadim to support Tyra, to support Hashkafa, to support my Rebbe's legacy. So the author of the book, Rabbi Saul Besser, writes that a young Lakewood Tamil Chacham had accepted a position as a high school Rebbe. And at this point, he, Rabbi David already wasn't well. And he knew Rabbi David wasn't well, but he was desperate for advice. Here he's going to take on a new job of being a high school Rebbe. He came to Rebbe's house and spoke about the challenges of the student body. And he wanted to know what would be the best approach, what would be the best derech to take with them. Abdavid wasn't feeling well. And he didn't really, it didn't appear, as Rabbi Stroll writes over here, that he was following the questions. Must have been laid on in the illness. Finally, Rabbi David raised his head and looked at the young Mechanach. Love them, he said. Just love them. And in five words, he shared the Chinuch approach that had worked for him for a half a century. Just love them. So as tonight we go down an opportunity for Memory Lane to be able to share, to share the beautiful building of a yeshiva that's steiging, a masifta that's doing well, a masifta that is really on the march in Klal Yisrael, Baruch Hashem, all of Klal Yisrael that really has to emerge out of what we have had the struggles the last few months. So I'll give you a chance to connect and get some, get comfortable. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program for tonight. There'll be a presentation about the Yeshiva Gedayla of Carteret. Just giving you the timeline. We'll, of course, be honoring Parents of the Year Award. We'll be presenting an alumnus award to one of the Talmidim. And then they're going to continue to a beautiful opportunity for you all at home to be mishtatif in a CM Ashas given by the Rosh Yeshiva of this beautiful Maisid of Israel Brown Shlita, the son-in-law of Rab David, accompanied by Kaddish following the Siyam Ashas, by the oldest son of the Rebbe, of Melech Trent, the Shiva of Yeshiva Meshach Yeshua, followed by music and dancing, and then we'll continue with a beautiful legacy program, and we'll be honored to hear words from the Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva Darach Taira, the one and only Rabbi Yaakov Ben Shlita who will be introduced by a chaver of mine from Atlanta, no stranger to the Camp Monk crowd, who certainly is tuning in, of Dave Silverman Schlita, who's a very wonderful person, someone who I'm honored and so privileged to be calling a friend. So sit back, enjoy a beautiful program, and I now send you over to the studio to watch a beautiful video about our yeshiva. The chinuch we're giving over in Carteret is we're making B'nai Torah. The student body wants to be involved in one thing only, in Torah and Avoida. A well-rounded outlook on life. To produce serious B'nai Torah that are shaykh to become Gedola Yisrael. Our yeshiva is headed by two Rosh yeshiva who are guiding lights to the Talmidim, infuse them with a geshmak and with a bren and with a desire to finish the Masechta, finish Shas, chazer it, live it. The yeshivas themselves are tremendous Talmidim Chachamim, which are a living example of what it means, godless Batayr. They're extremely normal people, down to earth people where you can talk to them and feel they understand you. The yeshiva is privileged to have extremely dedicated Rebbeim who give of themselves not only during the time that they're in yeshiva, but also at all hours of the day and night. The yeshiva covers all the aspects of what a Bachar needs in order to give him the tools to be successful in Avedis Hashem, in life, in Torah and Mitzvahs. We're trying to help them accomplish 
their own strong basis in Gemara, whatever it be, in learning and everything, where they'll be able to grow from there on their own and continue taking it throughout them in their life. The Rebbeim are warm, and it's always a small group. It's more personal. You get a real catcher with the Rebbe. Very easy with the Bachrim to help them explain the Gemara step by step, and they care about the Bachrim. We pride ourselves in the fact that the Talmidim are very errant. And that's what we're here, to help guide them and encourage them and lead them to it. You see, as the Bachrim get older and they become budding Talmud Chachamim, they know all of their ideas and Shas and Paiskim, and it's really very beautiful. In the yeshiva, we're very, very mocked that we have a very strong English program as well. When a Bachrim graduates from Sift of Carteret, they should have a command of the English language at a high school graduate level. They should have a solid understanding of biology, chemistry, physics. They should have a solid skill set in math. We're here to be Aivdei Hashem, teach the Talmidim how to learn, teach them Taira, make them Talmidei Chachamim, Yerei Shemaim, Balimidei Teves. The tkufa of the virus, obviously, it brought many challenges for on all fronts, for the Bachrim, for the Rabbeim. Like every other yeshiva, we were, we were trying to figure out what in the world is going to happen. I missed yeshiva. It was hard not being in yeshiva. Not having been able to learn together in person, we were missing the learning, we were missing the connection, the kasha between the Rebbe and Talmud. We prepared our staff to be ready to be teaching from home. The next day, we up and running ready with the phone systems. The amount of Bachim that called in with Shilas to discuss and talk and learning till the wee hours of the morning late at night, and the way you see that they were ligging in the sugi, they were living it up. It was something they kept with them all day long. It was constantly on their mind. If they didn't get through, they're calling again, calling again, until they get through, we're able to discuss it and work out. The Rebbeim's effort during the COVID, the Kufa, was unimaginable. If someone didn't get the sugi straight, they'd have a call me, call me right after Shear, call me tonight, anytime you can call. Every Bachar counts. The warmth and the caring and the geschmack that the Rebbeim infuse in their shiurim over the phone. It was so beautiful to see the way that the real true colors shined. And there were so many Bachim that I would have to say that they gained more from this than in a regular situation because they had to exert more kaiches than is usually necessary. The Bachram have really, really, really uh, gone beyond. They're learning well, the Bachram are, are being responsible. It's almost as if Yeshiva was still in session. Now that the yeshiva is back, it's wonderful to hear the kaltera reverberating within the walls of the yeshiva here in Carteret. It's amazing to be back in yeshiva, seeing everyone's face, seeing your bay, and being in Beis Nader's Falls Farm. The atmosphere around you is good for learning. Baruch Hashem, now that we're back in yeshiva, and it's very good to see everyone back together, Baruch Hashem is definitely very enjoyable. We, are, we see how much we missed each other and how much there is what to gain from being in yeshiva. It's nice to see the Rebbeim and see my friends, to talk with them face to face. Now we have to come to appreciate it much more what it has to offer us and make sure we don't lose anything that which the lessons that we picked up throughout the virus when we weren't here and we should keep that with us to keep on going. My bracha is to Talmidim and their families at large, our newfound Talmidim. They should continue in their Biko Sha'emes, in their Avaidis Hashem. They should be Matzliach together. Yeshiva of Carteret stands for loving Torah and being a good example and being a walking Kiddush Hashem. When I think about Rabbi Shulman, I think of Erlichkeit. The whole Mishpacha is such a beautiful family, all around, well-rounded, a walking, talking Kiddush Hashem. Rabbi Shulman, if you watch him daven, if you watch him learn, if you watch him interact with people, you see the words of Chazal, that the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu should be beloved through you. You see that personified in the way Rabbi and Mrs. Shulman live their lives. Rabbi Shulman is a machanach par excellence in his yeshiva where he is. The family as a whole is a family of chinuch. They understand what it means to be a Rebbe in a classroom, trying to get through to Talmidim, to students. I was looking for a yeshiva for my son. I wanted a place where they would try to mold the boys into having fine character. 
and a place where the boys would love learning. And Baruch Hashem, it's been an amazing experience for him. You're able to steig, and you're able to learn any place you want. It's my day to go be smarter than Caesar, and everyone's learning. And an older bay, and you're able to talk to whatever you want. Motel is a bacher whose Yiddish hearts comes through to anyone who meets him. And that's a product of the wonderful chinuch that Rabbi and Mrs. Shulman have given him. And Mordechai is such a lebedik of bacher. He brings chiyas to the, everything that goes on in the yeshiva, the learning, the davening. He's always kaching and learning, handling a svara, and davening with the bren. It's very beautiful. And it's a pleasure to have such a fine mishpacha as part of the Masifta. They are constantly in tune with the ruach of the yeshiva, with the ruach of what a ben teira should be, and the way they implement and work hand in hand with an hall in achieving that ultimate goal. Baruch Hashem, my son has found a very good path in the Masifta. He loves learning Torah. He loves his rebbeim. He loves just being around the sviva, around the environment. And we can tell that he's constantly growing and growing. We hope that Rabbi and Mrs. Shulman will have tremendous nachas from Matal and from their whole family. And this should bring a riboy kvayt shemayim in the world. On behalf of my wife, we give the Masifta a great bracha that they should continue to be bar Torah, to continue to grow, that they should be able to inspire their Talmudim to continue loving Torah. And Be'ez Hashem, they will continue to be a flagship yeshiva for many years to come. The yeshiva served as a place where, of course, everything was based on Limun Torah and Avedah Hashem. But it was a place where I was taken care of. Yeshiva Tzvayi Yisrael Aryeh, founded in the year 2006. We started with 14 Bachram in the Yeshiva. Mayor Mandro came to the Yeshiva somewhere like a month or so before Hanukkah and he immediately made a very strong presence in the yeshiva. The friends that I made in yeshiva were friends that I retained for life. The close-knit environment that was present in the yeshiva at the time allowed for us to really bond. Mayo was not just one of the group. He was a life force within the group. The atmosphere that he brought along and the chiyas that he provided is something that was felt throughout the yeshiva. The mayor was always someone that extremely enthusiastic, always there for everyone, really someone who was a mentor. He always made sure everyone was involved. He was always, you know, connecting between the older Bachrim and the younger guys. The reason Mayer fit into the yeshiva environment in Carteret so well is that the focus was not just on intellectual development, but also on proper development of Midot. That figure is very important in their daily life and my son's daily life. There was an atmosphere where one was encouraged to contribute whatever they could. Every week, I'd put together a Dvar Torah, which I would write, I would edit. Just about every day, I was able to put out um, a halacha yoimis, a piece on halacha. The achrayas that he took when he was here and the Christ that he continues to take when he's not physically part of the yeshiva and his concern and love for the yeshiva is something that's very, very unique. He always looks to connect and help the yeshiva in various different ways, from keeping connected with the alumni itself, to the rabbeim, to the anhala as a whole, and always helping the yeshiva in any way that he can. I have such tremendous hakara to the yeshiva. They were so warm, they provided me the space that I needed to be my own person, but not just be my own person, but to flourish and to truly tap into my personal talents, let them come to fruition. To my son, I wish for him the nachat that we are having in seeing him and his family and the type of success in, in Jewish studies, in Yiddishkeit, and in general life that we've seen with him. And to the yeshiva, I wish the yeshiva continued growth, more students, and to continue its key role in developing the next generation of Jewish leaders.
What a beautiful, beautiful video. Special mazel tov to all the honorees and their families. The yeshiva and the hanhala are extremely grateful to all the honorees who have stepped forward to help. On the behalf of the entire yeshiva and the Trank family, we'd like to thank all the donors who have made tonight's dinner a smashing success. It's an unbelievable thing. A few months ago when they came up with the idea to make this dinner, I don't know if it was two months, a few months ago, because I got a call about six, seven weeks ago. It's really hard to know who's going to come. Usually you have a dinner, and sometimes you get the reservations, you get a good idea. You didn't know if there's going to be a real attraction to be able to get people to be mishtatif, especially in the times that we are living. But the yeshiva is so grateful. Tremendous outpouring of support, love, and respect for what the yeshiva is trying to do. And together with the opportunity to have sponsorships, a special, special section that is being created, very unique. The yeshiva must have pulled with Art Scroll to be able to create this beautiful idea and opportunity to be able to have their own special section. So Rabbi Sa, if you still have not donated, there's still an opportunity to donate to the yeshiva, and you can still do so. Uh, please make sure that you... Uh, don't, don't wait to do it. Do it tonight. I think the deadline is tomorrow. Moving right along in this beautiful program. Sorry, I can't serve you the main dish yet, but uh, we'll have to improvise. It's my opportunity and my privilege to introduce the executive director of the Yeshiva Gedalia Masifta, Carteret, Rabbi Yaakov Tzvi Biedemann, who's been working so hard to make this dinner, this unique and special dinner, the success that it is. Rabbi Biederman, please join us. Thank you, Chatzkel. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to be a part of it, a major part of it. This night is quite unique. As Chatzkel mentioned, it's the first yard site of Rabbi Trank Zatzal. Rabbi Trank had a unique connection with the yeshiva where the yeshiva was sort of his second yeshiva in, in everything. He would come often, visit often. The yeshiva, the yeshiva would have him over for Shabbos often. And he always reminded us about how lucky we are to have rekindled Torah in a distant place where Torah was lost in Carteret, New Jersey. The Rosh Hashiva will be following with a Siyam Hashas. Just thinking about the Siyam Hashas, I remember the last Siyam Hashas in Carteret, where Rabbi Trank got up and spoke, where Rabbi Trank was there dancing with all of his kaiches. But this one will be different. This one is in memory of his holy neshama. I want to start by thanking, thanking all the donors, all the Talmidim, family members, friends who responded to our call to support the, the yeshiva while honoring the legacy of Rabbi Trank. Rabbi Trank often visited the yeshiva and he always spoke about how the Talmidim, the Talmidim learned, how the Talmidim were so lucky to learn from our Chashav Rosh Yeshiva, Harav Israel Brown, and Arav Yaakov Meir, Shalita. And he would often talk about the Achnas to Sefer Torah in Yeshiva, where we had Rav Matisio Salomon. And he would talk about, he, I should say, he spoke about it every time he came. He spoke about it. He reminded us how Rav Matisio danced in the streets of Carteret. It is an honor to have had him as part of our yeshiva in such a unique way. The, the, donors, the, the donors are continuing that legacy. 
And we're proud to announce that the yeshiva has, has started a unique fund called the Rabbi David Trank Talmidim Fund, where it, the funds will go, many of, much of the funds from this dinner will be going to help Talmidim that need extra assistance wherever it's necessary. The The donors are welcome to continue giving on, on our website, thetributedinner.com. The, the, um, the donors that give $250 or more are welcome to, are going to receive a book, the copy, a copy, a unique copy, a, a tribute, di tribute dinner edition of the Rabbi Trank's biography, Just Love Them. And we thank all those sponsors that got involved. There's still a few chapters left. Uh, the book sponsor was taken. We thank the Schroen family. And uh, we thank all those who contributed throughout this dinner. Without further ado, I introduce the Rosh Yeshiva, the Rosh Yeshiva, Harav Israel Brown, son-in-law of Rabbi Trank. Before I start with the Siyam, I just want to express Akar Satoiv. We really had no idea what to expect going to this dinner. We knew we had two honorees that were exceptional, the Shulmans, as the parents of the year, and Remeyer and his wife, Mandro, as alumni of the year. And we knew we were going to do something. Le'ilu nishmas, my shver, Menachem Yichel David Ben Rabbi Yeshua Heschel Zechayin Tzadik V'Kadosh Lebracha. But we didn't know, especially on these times with the coronavirus, with the financial hit that many people took, whether financially it would be a successful dinner. And one of the things that we as Hanhala always take from a dinner is the chizuk. We meet with the parents. We meet with, with the supporters of the yeshiva. And we come away from the dinner, mechuzuk, in what we're trying to do with the yeshiva. We didn't know how this dinner would work out. And the response from the shulman friends, from the people who have a shaykhus, to the shulmans, from the Mandro Mishpacha, both her mayor and his wife, and his parents and in-laws, their friends, the, the amount of chizuk we got from the responses from their avayda and working for the yeshiva was unbelievable. And then, this was a very unique experience, calling people for the dinner and getting story after story after story of how my shver, Zechreinit Tzadik Levracha, changed their lives. I called somebody yesterday and he told me, this is 50 years ago, before Adelphia, before the Mir, he told me he was like a Puerto Rican kid off the block. He came to Pirche, to my shver, and my shver changed his life. And we heard story after story like this. People who literally changed due to my shver, due to his ava that he had for each yachid, due to the tremendous chizik he gave them. And that itself was a tremendously exhilarating experience. I want to mention a point about my shver, Zechariah Levracha, that is not generally focused on. And I believe that everything else that he did becomes much more chashiv when we know this. And that is that he was a tremendous Talmud Chacham. I mentioned by the Levaya, the last Pesach after the Seder. So I took out a Gemara to try to learn for a few minutes. I was learning Yavamis. 
And he was really very shvach at that time. And he called me over. He asked me what I'm learning. I told him, Yavamas. So he asked me to read the Mishnah on the Aflamet Aleph. And I started reading the Mishnah. And he corrected me in the Girsa. Balpe. He wasn't looking in. His head was sort of half down. It was after the Seder, whatever time it was, 2, 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> he used to walk through the streets of Lakewood. Everybody knows he would walk through the streets of Lakewood to be Mechazic people. We'd go to this person, to that person, to this Chayla, to this Talmud. But he would also walk through the streets of Lakewood, Chazering, Yivamis Balpeh, Chazering the Shiurim he heard from his great Rebbe, Rav Shemal Brudni Zechayna Levracha. And when somebody like that puts all his kaiches and all his ava into Bachrim, it's not just somebody acting on his emotions, but it's somebody coming with the kol kayach atayra to build people up. In the last, in the last Kufa, so I visited him one day. We were sitting in the, in the living room, all those of you who came over the last year or so. No, he would sit there in the chair, and sometimes he was more responsive than others, and this time he was sitting there, and he was being very quiet. He wasn't really participating in the conversation. And I mentioned something to somebody there about the Bachram and Carteret, about the Yeshiva and Carteret. And it was like I pushed the button. He got all animated. He said, what you're doing for the Bachram and Carteret is unbelievable. You give them the kaiches, you develop them, they become tamidei chachamim. And that was really all the years. His approach, he used to be mechazik, me and the other Yeshiva, Rabbi Yaakov Meir Shlita, he used to tell us we were Tamidah Chachamim. He used to tell the Bachrim that we're Tamidah Chacham and they should get whatever they could from us. According to my Shred, there were many more Gedalim in Klai Yisrael than most people count. And this was something, this was a running theme throughout the years. He would give me practical advice how to deal with Bachrim, and he was very involved both in the particular day-to-day -day aspect of many things that went on in yeshiva and also in giving us a world view. Obviously, the hashkafa that he had of how to approach a bacher, how to deal with a bacher, was something that not just rubbed off, but was a direct kesher to how we dealt with our bacher. Just to be messiahim before and make the actual see him, Somebody once asked, my uh, mother asked him how, it maybe happened many times, I heard it from him, how she could have a son like him. And he told her, if you're a mother like my mother, then you'll have children like me. And I would like to take this opportunity to be marketized to my parents. My father, Shlita, my mother, Shlita, they're mysterious nefesh for Tyra, they're godless in Tyra. What they gave over to me, to all, my siblings, to the whole world, really, of what a musig of a Tamil Chacham is, what a musig of Chinuch is. And ain't the ain't the Shire, the Akaras I have to them. I can't be here by the seam in person. We have a minyam at Sumsum in the room spread out, but in many ways they're here. Just to end off, that the nisham of my shver zechrein levracha should be a schos for the whole mishvacha, for the bachar of the family, Rebeli Melech Shlita. The Rashiva, my Rashi Yeshua, my Shma, my Shvager of Shmuel Engelson, or some Chadavik Kravitz, Reb Chaim Yitzchak Trank, Shlita. We'll hear from him later on the video. 
and my shvagar Reb Shia Trank, the Rebbe in Minneapolis. My shvagar and Shama should be a schus for them, for all their children, for all his einiklach and our einiklach. And just to end off, that my shvagar, my shvagar Tlita should be for many years the Raisha Mishbacha. We should be able to gain from her in her own right. She was the Amura Yemini of my Shver. And she's a Mechanechas in her own right in many, 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 many ways. And she should see Nachas from all her children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. Anybody who teaches halachis every day should be confident that he's a ben oilam abosh. Don't read halachis, read it halachis. Halachis oilam loy, he'll have oilam habu. Hadun alachinaikas, the sliklam is sech the nido, the chalashas. Yehili <laughs> Onu rotsim ain rotsim, onu rotsim l'chaye oilam abov ain rotsim l'ver shachas and emav atoliim toyidim l'ver shachas. An sheidamu mumir moye lo yachzi me amani avdach boch. Yir rotsim l'fonach adin ayelai k'shem shazatani l'saim kol hashas kain da zeni l'haschim mesechlus l'sar machayim l'saimum. Lil meidu l'lame lishmar v'lasis l'kayim es kol de beis amotay rosecha biyava. Uschus kalatanoim abayroim is amide chachomim yame lil izari shalay tomus atayro mi piu mi bizari vizarizari ad oilum. This is kayim bi vizalecha tancha isok vishoch bachot ishmar alecha vakit sa isi isi si chacho ki vi yirbu yom echa vi asibu lachash nais chayim erech yomim bi minum bi smaila ishabachavai radinoi oizama yitain adinoi vorecha samay vashalayim. Yes, my shwagger of Eli Melech to say the Kaddish. Scandal <laughs> Hey, Shimei, Rabbi, me Barach, Lola, Mulal May, all my oyes, Barach, the Ishtabach, the Ispar, the Israel, Mamma, the Isna, Savi, is Hador, the Is Allah, the Is Allah, the Kutcha, the Ho. Well, I'm in Kol, the Hasavi, she also touched the Hasav and Echmosa, Damiron, Volmov, in Ru Amen. Al Israel, Val Rabbonon, Val Talmi de Hoin. The Al Kol Talmi de Salmi de Hoin. The Al Kol Mandoskin by Rice, or the Basar Hodain, but the Bukhalasar Vasar.
It would be a tremendous Nachas Ruach to donate right now for this amazing, amazing dinner, amazing cause. Such an Aliyah for such an Ishama Rabbi Trink that we all remember touched me. He touched me in such a way that elevated my Nishama. A tremendous, tremendous hashpa that he had on old Khalis Ro. Achas Shoalti is all Rabbi Trank wanted. Thank you so much, Abdavid Gabe. Great job, as always, being mechazek to Oilam. And yes, please take this opportunity, this special opportunity, in, on the eve coming up of tomorrow night, of the yard site of our Heilig Rebbe, Rab David Trink, to please be mishtatev in this beautiful, beautiful maimid to help the yeshiva gedayla of Carteret perpetuate the legacy of our Rebbe, Rab David. And so, Rabbi Sai, please, on the bottom of your screen, whoever's watching, and you still haven't had a chance to participate, and you're enjoying the program, and you like the messages that you're hearing, you have an opportunity to take part in this historic, historic book, a special section that has been created for this special moment, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be part of our special moment. Chapters are still available. Benefactors are still available. Please donate to the yeshiva, thetributedinner.com. It should be below your screen. There are still few, few chapters left. And Baruch Hashem, we've had a very, very successful program. Please don't miss the opportunity. Please donate now. It is my privilege now to introduce the next segment of the dinner. The next segment of the dinner is the Rabbi Train tribute portion of the dinner. I have an entire book, 15 chapters to talk, and even 15 chapters wouldn't do justice. Legend, larger than life, visionary, many names used to describe my holy Rebbe, our holy Rebbe, Rabbi David Trink, Zechitz Hadik, the Kaddish Levracha. But to us, visionary and all that, all true, every one of those. But to us, Talmidim, the highest title the most prestigious way that we could ever remember him was as Rebbe. It is my honor, my privilege to introduce the chairman of this dinner, someone who I've known literally my entire life, who has always been there for Reb David. When we called upon him to help us, he was there. Reb Dave Silverman from Atlanta, Georgia, to be able to introduce the next segment of our dinner. After the video, after the video, please pay attention to the video. <laughs> My father, Rabbi Trank, grew up in Baropak. He went to Eitz Chaim for elementary school. He also went to RJJ starting in seventh grade. From Yaakov Yosef, my brother went to Miri Yeshiva. From there, he became the dorm counselor. He became a Rebbe there. He was a Mashgiach there. And he was always in Camp Monk, being Machanach children. And then he went to Adelphia. He became a Rebbe in Adelphia and he became the Menile in Adelphia, and really, Adelphia was synonymous 
with my shver with Rabbi David Trank, Zechariah Lebracha, and Rabbi Shein, Rabbi Yudbad Lechaim. He always saw himself as being a Rebbe teaching Gemara, but also having all the achrayasin and all the myriad responsibilities that any principal has and, and that he had as a father to all his Talmudim. Then he opened up his own yeshiva, Maresha Shishuam, when he moved to Lakewood, and he continued on. And that yeshiva is still going on. And I saw Rabbi Trank interact with the boys he was teaching, the relationships that he formed, how he wasn't just a, a nine to five Rebbe, he was part of their lives, he became part of our lives. And uh, it was the beginning of a relationship that lasted years and years. His whole Mahalach HaChinuch is that he was able to see the tremendous miles everybody had, and the tremendous miles Bachram had, and Yung Galait had, and Rabbeim had, and he was always able to see that because he had a tremendous ava for every year. He would love every Bachar, regardless of his kashrayness, regardless of his background, and accept them. He looked at all of us. He identified everyone with their milas and not with their chasronos. Rabbi Trank was uh, someone who drew you in. It was the heart, the neshama of the boys that mattered to him, only their neshama. The boys felt it. Every single Bachar who was there built a lifelong Kesher with him, as I have and as my son Yehuda had with Rebbe. Not only was he teaching the boys, not only learning with them, but he was driving around Lakewood, he was picking them up in the van, he was making sure that they had night activities, he was bringing them to his house. Rabbi Trank was a 24-7 for all of the boys. He lived with them. He ran to the dormitory, two o'clock at night, would lie back down, four o'clock in the morning, Six o'clock in the morning, he was up preparing, going to the mikvah, davening, saying till him, learning, preparing his share. He loved them, he loved them, he loved them. Rebbe would come years after my son had already left Moresh Yeshua. Rebbe would come walk Shabbos to the house to check in on us, to say hello. He'd be walking around the whole lake with Shabbos morning, checking in on all of his boys. The love, the affection, the caring that he had, the lengths that he would go for every Talmud. There were no limits to that. And my Shver would do anything for his children and his grandchildren. He developed an ongoing shaykhas with all my children. And even though they didn't live in Lakewood, they lived an hour away, they were constantly with him. He was, he, every week, we, 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 they got to see him and, and shmuzu with him and spend time with him. He was devoted singularly to every need that any of his children would ever have regardless of the time and effort that it took. Obviously, any event in the yeshiva, he was here, and he would be mechazek the bachrim, and the last seven, eight years, every single time he spoke, he spoke about that achnas zekatayr. He was really bringing out how much the Rebbein Shalom loved the yeshiva and loved the yidden in Carteret. Every kasha that a Talmud asks is the most important kasha in the world. Why? Because he's asking it, and he wants to know the answer. Rebbe's legacy is not just for the Talmidim, it's not just for us and the impact he had on us and our families, but I think so many other Rebbeim were uh, motivated and inspired to adapt how they related and how they relate to their Talmidim because of the model that Rebbe set. There's a lot of noise in this world. Rabbi Trank had the unique ability to cut through that and to have a genuine relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu in a way that we felt that we ourselves could improve our relationship with Hashem by watching how Rabbi Trank conducted his own life. Tens and tens and tens of Talmidim and their families are out there lighting Neiros, being mispalo by their Rebbe who loved them, who took care of them, who was their father, who was their grandfather who danced with them, who cried with them. Reb David Schrenk, Chad Bedoida. My wish is that we should learn to emulate his midas, and by doing that, I think his neshama will go a little bit higher in Shemayim. He should be a melech yeshe for all of Klal Yisrael. He should take a learn this lesson, that every Yid deserves Ava. My bracha to Rebbe and Trank, the whole Trank family, to the, the mostos that were dear to Rabbi Trank, is that we all should continue to emulate Rabbi Trank. We should grow in his ways. We should continue to serve Hashem and draw people close with Rabbi Trank's inimitable sense of, of love and sense of vibrancy. Tonight, 
The night of the dinner is the yard site of Rebbe Zeichut Tzadik for Kaddish Levacha. What more fitting way to honor his legacy and to continue his work of bringing every Bachar to the maximum potential by supporting this beautiful yeshiva of Kordoret, which follows in Rebbe's footsteps. That was a very moving expose of Rabbi David Trank. I am Rabbi Dave Silverman. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been involved in the Atlanta Scholars Kolel since its beginning 33 years ago. My connection to Rabbi David Trank runs deep and wide. For 36 summers, our families and lives were intertwined in Camp Monk. My connection to the Messiah Mashas this evening, Rabbi Azriel Brown, is also about that old. I helped raise him on the campus of Neri Yisrael when his Choshev of father ran the Chabura, which I attended on Friday nights. We learned, we got a little bissel of kibbutz cake, and we had the warmth of a family experience during my Bochrum years. It's a cover to be a part of the Rosh Yeshiva of Carteret's 11th Seal Mashas, Mazel Tov. I might be off by one. Rav Ruderman, one of the brachas said he could be off by one. I wish him, his talented Rebetzin, Mazel Tov on this beautiful Seal Mazecher Nishmas, is Shver, Rav David Trank. To the Messiah's parents, Moshe and Leah Brown, your mother in law, as your mother in law, Rebetzin Leah Trank. May your children in eight o'clock bring you much nachas and comfort. It is a bittersweet joy knowing that Rav David sheps nachas from Gan Eden. Mazel tov to this evening's honorees, the Mandros and the Shulmans. David Shulman is a landsman from Atlanta. I've watched him grow. I know that, and Vaxo is to become a fine aventura. I know that his parents, Alan and Roseanne, are at Shepping Nachas. His brother, Jeremy, who I couldn't get to sit down and learn too much in high school, is also Shepping Nachas from the accomplishments of their brother and son. Dr. Morty Lishouse, Ben Bruce of Camp Monk fame, as uh, the alumnus chair of this evening. And um, I also helped raise Morty Lishouse in camp. I worked together with his father, Bruce and Camp. I've spent much time trying to figure out how Morty's sense of humor is not the same as his father, Bruce. I'm most grateful that I didn't have to fly to New Jersey to be part of this wonderful and meaningful evening. The Yeshiv Gadol in the Sifta of Carteret has dedicated this evening Le'ilu Nishmas Rav David Trank Zichron Levrocha. Kishmo Kahu. Rav David was beloved and he loved everyone. Maybe better put, he was beloved because he loved everyone. He imparted his larger than life energy to anyone he could give a hug to. He was a Talmud Chacham. He knew parts of Shas Baal Peh. One time at a meal in the dining room in Camp Monk, his shvagar of David Cohen mentioned the Gemara. Rab David started rattling it off. A few seconds later, Yoli Gold walked by and he started rattling it off. I felt so out of place. I just started to say the Ashrei along with everybody else. Rabbi David was a real Oved Hashem. He was always looking for ways to grow, to be more sensitive to the needs of others. People would come to visit him in camp and discuss their issues for hours. Rabbi David would sit, he wouldn't eat, he'd miss meals. Rabbi Trank would sh- save the food for him. It would sit on the plate with a paper towel on top and get cold, sometimes till late 
in the evening. He was a medak taken mitzvah all summer long. This man, he was makbed on this man of the Kriya Shema of the Mogen Avram. This man of the Kriya Shema of Mogen Avram. And that's very early in the morning during the summer times. He went to bed as late as all of the other campers, but he was up in time for this man Kriya Shema of the Mogen Avram. He was an athlete. David had strength. One time in his learning groups, he asked, where is a certain young man, ninth grader, of rather large size? Someone said, well, he wasn't feeling so well. He's sleeping in the bunk. Rabbi David jumped up, ran down the hill, which is a rather long hill. It's probably a football field. He ran down the football field. He went down to the bunk, picked the kid up out of his bed, ran back up the hill with the kid in his arms, and sat him down in learning groups and continued to teach without missing a beat. He was a Mishunadik Bal Kishrin. He put things together in his mind that sometimes no one else could see, sometimes no one else could understand. He made Gramana on the spot. Sometimes they were so happy he had to explain how the two ideas fit together. Rabbi Eli Monk asked Rabbi David to be in charge of stelling people in the dining room, the staff dining room, the SDR for Debre Torah. He gave an introduction. It was beautiful. It was magnificent. It was so original. He would often forget the name of the bacher he was introducing. But it was beautiful Debre Shvach about this young man that made him feel better his introduction, than the words of Torah that he shared. He had tremendous kovara Torah. He had yireh for Talmidei Chachamim. We have machon in camp where Abdavid Cohen has an opportunity to share divrei hashkafa with the campers, the older campers, the staff of camp. There was not a machon that went by that didn't hear Rabbi Trank yelled from the back, you're the God of Ador. We have to have respect to the God of the Lord. And that is why we are here to hear how you convey to us the way we should approach today's situations, today's issues. It was unbelievable. I had the opportunity of being in the presence of Ruv Ruderman when Rabbi David Schrenk came to visit Rabbi Ruderman. He had been a Doran counselor many years before, and he came to visit the Rosh Hashiva. The moment he walked in the door, Rabbi David Shrink started to sitter, and he came into the office, the library where the Rosh Hashiva was, and he, and he started to sit. No, he stood, and he stepped back, and the Rosh Hashiva would start to speak, and he, he couldn't decide whether he wanted to sit or stand. He was in tremendous awe of being in the presence of the Rosh Hashiva. The Rosh Hashiva was smiling. It was quite humorous to him how he couldn't figure out exactly where to be. So he told him, Zetzavek, sit. And then he drew him very close so he could speak very closely to him. It was a beautiful sight. Rav David had such yira for lofty Heiliga people. Rav David was machazik all of us. He drew all of us up. He used to say over to me, and he had his... Shtiklach Torah that he shared with each and every person. He often had a, a vort, an insight that felt was appropriate, and he would say it over many times to that particular person. So says on a Tosas and Kedushin that if a, if a person, a fisherman, puts bait in the water, then he's Kona those fish, and if another fisherman puts his nets up, and intercepts those fish, his Yored was so high of, of the original fisherman who put the bait in. So the Ksos asked, the fish, they're Hefker. What Shaykhas are they to that original fisherman who put the bait in? Zok the Ksos, says Rabbi David drank saying over the Ksos. The Ksos says that when the fish come up to the bait, then he's Kone, the fish. Zok Rabbi David drank. When you raise up a Talmud, you're Kona, a Talmud. 
And he used all of his energies, all of his strength, his chius, his larger than life chius, to raise people up, myself included. He remembered details about me, about my family, about anyone and everybody that he knew that he just dug right back into our lives every time we would meet. On this day of his yard site, our dear friend Rabbi Gedalia Zlatowicz, yes, I helped raise Gedalia Zlatowicz as well, has published through Art Scroll a beautiful book. Maybe we could even call it a safer, a muster safer. Just love him. It was written by Surly Besser. Yes, I tried to raise Surly Besser in camp. And we are grateful to all of you who have been sponsors and donors to a special edition that is being published in honor of this evening's Seum and the art site of Rav David Schrenk. There are actually still a few uh, dedications that are available, and for a minimal of $250, you can get a free copy of this special edition that is being published in honor of the Yeshiva of Carteret this evening. I would like to suggest that it's required reading for any Rebbe and for any parent. Just love him. For many years in camp, I was a learning group Rebbe of the seventh grade. And as an incentive to memorize charts or Shaklavatari Lagmora, I offered Talmidim a glass of beer. And I spoke to Rabbi David Trank about it, and he said, if it's under rabbinic supervision, you sit with the Bachar, you could share the beer with him. Sometime in that winter, I got a phone call from a Mrs. Gordon in New York, Rabbi Yankel Bender's secretary. And she said, Rabbi Yankel Bender wants to speak to you. And this is what he wants to speak to you about. And she proceeded to tell me how inappropriate it is to be giving beer to seventh graders. Because in New York, it's not appropriate. Rabbi Yankel Bender called a few days later and shared with me his perspective, which I was makabal belayv shalim as it was given so lovingly. Since then, I became mamish, a Talmud of the Menahel of Gans Klal Yisrael. Rabbi David Schrank used to call his brother Rabbi Zevi, who works in Yeshiva Darkei Torah. Darkei Torah, he would say, Reb Zevi, get me Reb Yankel. I have to ask his advice. It's an honor and a cover to present Reb Yankel Bender. Mishos, Hagoinim Agdailim, Reb Yaakov Meir, and Reb Israel Brown Shlita, both of them. Shem Yarech Yemeim, Shtaisayim. Where in the world do we have two Rosh Yeshiva Shutfim? First of all, we'll get along so well with each other. What a special bracha that is. But have two guiding Gdaila Yisrael Mamish that finish us constantly and know so much Taira and Sterling Midas. They should both be avenged. They Chasyam Bishanim continue. They're Avaidis Hakaidesh and Yeshiva Gdaila of Kadabet and wherever else it might be. Thank you, Rab David. Dave Silverman. If there's a paradigm of Chesed in Chinuch, this is the man. To have him introduce me is a very Chashiv thing to me. To have his son, Shneya, going in his father's footsteps. As a Rebbe in our yeshiva, I'm bracha to you, Dave. You should continue to be the great Maravitzeri that you are. Yaakov Biederman, you put this all together. We're grateful to you. We're coming tonight to honor two. One is, of course, the Yeshiva Gedele of Kadaret, a chash of a Meisra Torah. And the Sikarin of Yedideinu, Ahuveinu, Yedid shall call Yisrael, David What an extraordinary man. What an extraordinary shidduch. I don't mean just a shidduch that he became a chutin with Ramesha Brown Shlita and his Rebbitzin. That Rabbi David's daughter married to Israel Brown. I think with the shutfis of Rabbi David Trank tonight, the Shiva Gdail of Carteret, she was a Vekishtelt, a Ftaira, a Favaida, and Milus Chasadim, which Rabbi David Trank personified. There's a Ramban. In the parish we read this past Shabbos, 
difficult parshas to understand what's going on over here. Very, very difficult parshas. They just left Har Chayri of Har Sinai being there a little bit under a year, 10 days less than a year. And they leave, the Chazal tell us, there's two psukim that have to interrupt somehow. Don't, don't belong there. They belong by the Golem, but he can say, all right, and there's two Nunat Fuches over there. Why, Chazal tell us? Because the Havdul bin Puranius, the Puranius, to separate between two bad occurrences, two difficult occurrences. One was obvious to Messiah and them, but Klai Yisrael decided to complain. Rashi says, Limsa Alila, against Rachmanothan, against Kaviyachel. That we know is the Puranius. What's the other Puranius? What's the Tzvait the Puranius? That they left Har Sinai. So what's his? What's his? They left Har Sinai. But they left Chazal tell us, Safer, like a child runs away from Yeshiva too quickly. They should have realized where they were. They should have realized where they were. So the Masha is, of course, what the Ramban speaks about it. You're talking about leaving our scene of the same thing as the Messiah and then So the Masha married the Gisaid. They were living in Mahar They were living in their Yeshiva. They had a Yeshiva by our Sinai. An embassy yeshiva where they learned Tyra of Maisha Rabbeinu was the greatest Rebbe that ever lived. How is it shy if these people should go ahead and become Bali Avera? Yerucham Lubavitz Chatzas Dei Chasid Lubavitz has a major mime around this. How is it shy to go become a synonym? After being a Hasina with Maisha Rabbeinu, you know what the Pranius was? They went too quickly because they didn't spear what it means being in a yeshiva. They left the yeshivas after my show. I beg from the yeshiva. When you leave the yeshiva and you forget who you are, not far behind it is the Messiah. Both Pranis are very, very difficult. We're coming here to speak about a man who lived in his yeshiva his entire life as a child and as a father and as a new yeshiva, whoever it was in Adelphia, later Marshall's Yeshua. He lived in a yeshiva as a yeshiva man called Yama from David Trek was the embassy yeshiva man. As he left in the yeshiva, he never stopped learning. He understood what it means to live in the yeshiva. Ramesha Brown, the language of Ishtak, Rebetzin, Azriel Brown's father, once told me, Meridika Maisa. There was once a young man that left near Israel in Baltimore, he went to say goodbye to Kizaganin. He says, Rashiva, Goyner, Abudim, is a Katsaris, Bikarish, Lavracha. Rabudim told him, Whatever you do, don't forget. Stay close to yeshiva. He took that with him, that bracha, that savah, sort of, and he went to Israel. He took a job. He had to join the Milawim, the reserves, the way the reserves work. You go for two or three weeks a year in the army, and then you go back wherever you came from. You have to be in the reserves in case chas you need it. So the single man joined the reserves, and the first day they come to the reserves, the, ca- the captain of the battalion, or whatever it is, gives a drasha, orientation. This particular person was a shtarke, kaychi vaitz miyadi person, but he spoke almost like this shame about kaviyachu, about a kaddish baruchu. It's all us, kaychi vaitz miyadi. We ain't gonna run, our rabbi, we're gonna do A, B, and C. We don't need to run, Islam. He said all kinds of terrible, terrible things. This younger man was very, very uncomfortable. He couldn't handle it. And he wanted to jump out of his seat and say, Sha! How could you talk like that? He didn't have it, he didn't have it. His first day in the army, he just couldn't do it. Well, as far as she yiddle, jumps up, and he says, Api Koret, he says to him, you, how can you talk like that? This is a bunch of the world, how can you talk like that? Quickly, two soldiers were sent over, they took him by the arms, they put him to, I believe, solitary confinement for two days. This younger man, coming out of there, Yisrael, a yeshiva man, is embarrassed. The other fellow didn't look like a real yeshiva man, yet he stood up, and I couldn't do it. When this fellow came back into the into the into the into the camp, he ran out. He says, "Tell me something. I, I'm embarrassed. You did it. I couldn't do it." What's the pshat? He says, well, "What do you do for a living, brother? What do you do?" So he answered him, "I'm the cook in Ponovish." Rang back and he said, "Oh, my Rebbe Rabbi said to me, stay close to yeshiva." Rebbe David said, "Of course, the is given in a yeshiva from the day he was born." Till the day he was nifta, and he leapt in yeshiva, not just because he was a marbitz Torah, he was a yeshiva man who learned and learned and learned and learned, never stopped learning. He would ask me to send me this is not my, my shmuelson. 
He would call me regularly. Where do you have the time? In the car. He would comment on this and comment on that. Thank me for this, thank me for that. He was a learner. Yeshua bin Nar, Parshas Kisisa, Layamish Mutech Oil. That's a compliment? Yeshua bin Nar? What a parent called to say in Yiddish, he'd say years ago, do Narayna. It's like almost an insult, you youth, you baby, who are you? Yeshua bin Nar? I think the Pshad is Pashat. I once heard from Rabbi Victor Miller, very nice word. He touched up by the Kruvim had the parts of Tinak. They were sculpted like tira, two children. I mean, I heard this drush and I became a chassan. I dabbed with my shver and I really shuled that Shabbos. And he spoke in Parshish Truma. And that was when I was, I came, I'd come to Shabbos to stay with, you know, my, my shver and shvigam, I called it at Shabbos. Go try a mill of your If you're going to put up two sculptures, why don't you put up Rabbi Meishet Feinstein on one side, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky on the other one, two of the daily Yisrael. Put up Rabbi Meishet and Rabbi Yaakov. What are you putting up two children for? You know what he said? He says, children know they have to learn. Adults, as they get older and older, I know it already. Very hard to argue with someone. Very difficult to argue with someone. Very hard. When they're older, I know better than you. I have experience. I'm better than you. Child knows he has to learn. Old person stops learning. Yeshua ben Nun was in the middle 50s. When the Torah calls him Yeshua ben Nun Nar. Around this Rebbe Moshe Rabbeinu is like a man on Nair. He never stopped being a Nair, a youth to learn. He became the Manik Yisrael in 1995 and 96 years old, Yeshua bin Nun. Well, as given on Nair, Kol Yomov, that's why he became the Nasif, the leader of Cloud Yisrael. You learn from the Rebbe. Was there ever a bigger Nair in this sense than Unzer Reb David, Sechet Tzadik Kaddish Lavracha? Reb David Shrank, Sechet Tzadik Kaddish Lavracha. What a level of Nair. Never stopped learning Kol Yomov. That's why you deserve to be the God of Hanchem in America. As a God of the Chinuch, with the gross hearts, with a huge heart. This is a good answer, Rabbi David. And that's what Kadaret is, Rabbi Sayyid. Kadaret, horrible with Bachem, and there's so much Sliach, Tamid the Chacham, they're producing. Who's with the Chachamim? Because Rabbi Israel, Rabbi Yaakov, it's not themselves, it's not them. It's not them at all. It's they built Tyra. When they meet this, I want to tell you a story, Rabbi Say. I had a schus. In Baltimore, they get together all the schools, they give half the day off to all the schools, and they come, all the Bechanchim of the Shtat come together. All the Bechanchim of the Shtat come together, and they, and they hear drushes. So I was a guest speaker one year. I spoke a number of times. One of the speeches was to 250 Moras from the city of Baltimore. So I wanted to tell them what it means to be a Mora, how you are, how chashiv you are. Hastish Tarebi, but you're a Mora. So I told him, you know, there's a younger man, Rosh Yeshiva of Carteret, New Jersey, Raziel Brown. Raziel Brown wrote his first safer, he came to visit me. He learned in our Yeshiva all of three years, grade six, seven, and eight. And he brought me the safer inscribed to his Rebbe, Rabbi Yaakov Bender. I said, Me, Rabbi Raziel, you became a God left to us. What are you bringing me a safer for? He says, You, Rabbi Bender. He says, You, Rabbi. I went to my olive base mower in Baltimore and I gave her the safer also because she taught me olive base. It had me this tie base. So I said this over to these mowers. I said, Rabbi Brown is a goggle. Goes to visit his pre winning mower in Baltimore. Goes to his pre winning mower in Baltimore to give her the safer that he wrote because you're the one who started me off. And I, I forgot the name of the lady. Right then and there, the lady stood up and she says, It's me. She's still a mower. It's me. He brought me the safer. No, where do you have such a midas? Do you know where you have it? Midas being taught by the Oilam and Carteret and the Dovet Trank. The midas of this man. I'm waiting for the book. I've spoken to Absurdly Bessa. Not the book, the safer. Many times about this wonderful safer. I'm looking forward to it. Because it's Molly, the Goddish, Tyra, and Midas. You don't even know when the Tyra starts, the Midas ends, and the Midas starts, the Tyra. You don't know where it goes. It's one parsha. It's Torah in Midas. Thus is the given of David. The great Reb David Trank. Oh, how we all miss him. Some people, the world says, no such thing as an indispensable person. And the Vart, they say, excuse me, is cemeteries are full of indispensable people. That's, that's the line they use. Reb David was indispensable. And you know another reason why? Because he had a wonderful, wonderful Rebetzin, Rebetzin layer. 
What an extraordinary person how they worked together. The harachah for each other, the way they treated each other. If this was live now, Rabbi Sai, I feel like it's live. The whole place should be standing up and screaming and cheering for this Heiliger Rebbe Trank. What an extraordinary lady. And the way the two lived with each other. The way they got along. David, I have to ask my wife. Not because she was tough, chas v'shalom. Because I can't do anything about my wife. She's my shutter for everything I do. And she was the same way. I got Ezra David. When you have a couple like that, the Torah is more pure. The chas is more pure. And you are Abdava Trank and your rabbits, and you are that shtub, the hail of your shtub, and what they have produced by Hashem and their family. There's a Ramban in last week's Pasha. Meridik Ramban. Kaiso was complaining to the them. They want meat. Hashem says, I can't, we're back to find all the meat. Hashem says, I have Hashem Tikzar. I can't handle them, says the Kaddish. I can't handle them. The Kaddish Baruch Hu, Esfoli Shivim Ish Mizikna Yisrael. Give me 70 years, Canaan, they'll help you. So Ramban says, like, you know, that he doesn't say, he doesn't say these words. He says, they're butchers, this Canaan. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna chop meat for them. They're going to shech meat for them. What are they going to do? So it's Ramban, I'm already thinking he's side in Chinuch, really. And this is dedicated to the Heiliger of David. I'm already thinking he's side in Chinuch. He says, Kaiso was demoralized. They're traveling, they were demoralized. They needed people to calm them down when you are demoralized. Not happy, you need meat. You need other things. You're not so free. You're not so free. You have a problem. The word he uses, I'm going to read the whole Ramban now. The Sevens Kingdom will do their job. Shachich es ha'om. Shin chof and the chof. Shin chof chof. Hamas hamelech shachocho. The last words in the first parak of Megillah Sesta. He calmed down Achashverish. The job of his kingdom will be to calm down Klai Yisrael. It's not so bad. Things are okay, Klai Yisrael. It's okay. What's going on in the kid's house, in the kid's mind, in the kid's kishka? So he could work with the child and calm him. When a kid doesn't, Avalam only Shiva, but David Trink was the king of this. He understood there's something going on over here. What's driving the child to what he's doing? Let's find out. Let's see what it is. To quiet down the nation, quiet down the people. That's the Unzer of David. Unzer of David was. A mensch that knew how to work with kids. With Bachram. He has good doyle oilam where he's talmidim. them. Good doyle oilam he has to tell them. And those who didn't turn out to be good doyle oilam. But you know what? He loved every single one of them. Because he understood what chinuch is, what chinuch is all about. So to have his memory to be honored tonight at this virtual dinner, but a dinner nevertheless, is very extraordinary, very special. Our brachet is mishpacha particularly the Rebetzin, is that not only the memories, but all of his great accomplishments that he did in this world will be around to give us all, to give you all sad and support and all that you need. How special this man was, how great he was. We got to remember how he ran. The Chalchem across the world should read, I haven't read it yet, everybody say, the new Sefer that's coming out. To learn what it means to reach every single neshama. Thus is given unto Reb David. Thus is unto Yibad L'chaim Temeruchim the Rebetzin. Thus is the G'day Le'olam that are fearing the great yeshiva G'day of Carteret, New Jersey. And Kishmachu bench them to continue this Yat Dishmai that they have, they'll have B'atzlach and Bracha to build this great Makam Taira and it'll be a schus of course for Israel Shver Reb David it'll be a grace, a grace, a schus for Reb David to see that Baruch Hashem, his children are building such a yeshiva. And all of us together should one day rejoice again with the coming Mashiach, with Chiyas HaMesim, and we'll be able to dance with Reb David again. Meher v'yameinu, ki yavi shilei, meher v'yameinu, amen v'yameinu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Bender. What an honor. Rabbi Silverman. We, uh, I want to thank also the dinner committee members, Reb Zevi Bold, Reb Chatzko Bennett, who was our MC, the Reb Naftali Miller, Reb Pinny Monk, Reb Getsy Tischler, and Moshe Tress, among all the others that contributed to the success of tonight. 
Rabbi Dave Silverman expended himself tremendously. The the uh, the Rebbitzin, Rebbitzin Trank, she was so kind, so helpful, so happy to help us. And in her in her typical elegant way, she didn't want any any thanks, any appreciation, any show of appreciation. She's not able to be here now as we have social distancing, but with she's sitting home watching us. We thank her. Thank you. Mayor Madro and David Schulman, an alumnus, a parent, both really helped, really reached out, and we thank them from the bottom of our hearts for reaching out. Dr. Morty Listhouse, good friend who I brought to Carteret back in the day. Ah, oh, such great memories with Mayor with Morty. How those days were just uh, a couple of Bacharim, 20 guys when, when I came to the yeshiva, and uh, some 12 years ago, and uh, how it's grown to a full high school, it, it's just incredible. I want to thank the Shrom, the Shrom family once again for sponsoring the book. The, the, all, this, all the chapter sponsors were all really made a big difference in making this dinner a success. The yeshiva, the yeshiva is happy to send the book out to you if you give $250 or more. And we thank you, all the donors, from the people who sent in $2 in the mail to the people who, who gave over $36,000 to the dinner. We thank all of you. Each of you are making a huge difference in the success of every single Talmud. We also want to thank the hosts, Raise It, uh, the co-hosts, I should say, Raise It, and Eagle Productions, and all the other, and Mint Media, who made such beautiful productions, and who helped us out through each step. Some of the footage was taken uh, before, the, before Corona, when we were still able to have the yeshiva open, and then some of it he had to squeeze in at the very end when we had to have social distancing already. Um, right before, when we were just able to reopen, he really made it happen. They really made it happen. I want to remind everybody that you could continue to donate. We hope to have the, the, this program will continue to be available online over the next, uh, hopefully we'll have it up and ready shortly. And without, uh, without much more, I want to say thank you. And thank you all for helping Yeshiva Tavares Yudarian. And we want to thank particularly Rabbi Yaakov Tzvi Biederman for going above and beyond the call of duty. This is a unique situation. He came up with unique solutions. Be'ez HaShem, the Rebbein Shalom should give him a bracha. The Ayske B'Sayche Yitzibar Ba'amuna that he should be zeicha to be continuing as avaydas hakaidish to help both the yeshiva of Carteret and all of Klal Yisrael. Yashakayach. Thank you, Mazel Tov.